It is now my absolute pleasure to introduce today's distinguished speaker, Peter Morton. As I mentioned before, like many of you in the audience, Peter Morton is a proud parent of a Stern student graduating here today. Mr. Morton is also the co-founder of the world-famous Hard Rock Cafe. He opened the first Hard Rock Cafe in 1971 in London when he was just 22 years old. Class of 2015, that's your age, the pressure's on. <laughs> Hard Rock Cafe became global when Mr. Morton opened the first Hard Rock in Los Angeles in 1982. He later opened the first 660 room Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas in 1995. Today, there are over 170 Hard Rock restaurants worldwide and 20 Hard Rock hotels. In addition to being a successful businessman, Mr. Morton is also a supporter of the environment, education, and medical sciences. He serves on the Board of Trustees of the Natural Resources Defense Council, as well as the board of the Young Eisner Scholars, an organization dedicated to leveling the education playing field for promising students in underserved communities. He is also on the UCLA Medical School Advisory Board. He has been a generous supporter of NYU Stern, and for that, we are grateful. Mr. Morton's successful career in many ways reflects the innovative and entrepreneurial mindset that I see in many of you, our talented Stern students. We are honored that he could be here to speak with us today. With that, please join me in giving him a very warm NYU Stern welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Morton. Thank you, Dean Menon, for your kind words. Graduates, friends, and family members, faculty, it is an honor to be invited to speak with you today. When I was thinking about what to say today, I thought back to when I was your age, and speakers would come to school and try to impart wisdom. I remember all I ever really wanted to know was, how did that guy pull it off? So I want to tell you a few stories from my own journey and that hopefully answer that question and might even be helpful to all of you as you set out on your own journey. When I was leaving college, I had a plan. I'm sure many of you have plans. That's where we all start. We have plans. My plan was to go to Harvard Law School. I would go there get a degree, join a respectable firm, make a respectable amount of money, and have a good life. I had it all figured out. Unfortunately, the Harvard Admissions Board had other ideas. <laughs> I got a rejection letter, and there went the plan. That's the problem with plans. Life gets in the way. I scrambled and found a job working for a new restaurant division of the Great Western United Corporation based here in New York. The job did not make my heart race. I told them I'd start in September. I wanted to take the summer to travel in North Africa and Europe until I eventually ended in London on my way back to go to work. London in 1970 was in full swing. Guys in red velvet pants, snakeskin boots, girls in miniskirts, people driving on the other side of the road. It was wild. <laughs> I loved it. But the plan was still to join Great Western United. And then one night, I had a fateful dinner with a friend. After eating on the road, and then encountering the boring food in London, I was homesick for some food, you know, that I really loved. I craved a hamburger, french fries, and milkshake. I looked down on my plate, and I had an idea. Everywhere you went, there was this amazing cultural disruption going on in London. The music, the fashion, the design, everything was blowing up and changing except for the food. The food was not keeping up with the rest of the city. It was all very bland and boring. What London needed was a hamburger joint. 
I informed Great Western United that there had been a change of plans. I stayed in London, met up my future partner. We each put up, scrounged up $5,000, and we went begging for a loan of $150,000 to every bank in London. We finally got the loan, and we began creating what would become the Hard Rock Cafe. Many of you will also have great ideas, ideas that get you excited and convinced that you can change the world, and that's awesome. But ideas are only the beginning. What's going to turn that great idea into reality is how much hard work you're willing to put behind it. Success is the marriage of good ideas with commitment, attention to detail, and follow through. I knew the only way the hard rock was going to work is if we nailed every single detail. From working with the ice cream manufacturers to get them to understand what American ice cream was, to teaching bakeries in England what a real sesame seed bun was, to redesigning our menu over a hundred times, and it was more than just the food. We had to get the right music. I sat on the floor of my flat at night making cassette tapes, if anyone remembers what cassettes are, <laughs> so we could just capture the right vibe in the right order. We snagged the Beatles graphic designer and spent months with him working on the Hard Rock logo, changing colors, working with the design until we got it right. We worked day and night on every detail until we were convinced we had a great product. Eventually, we were almost there. The Hard Rock was almost ready to open. When I stepped into the space and I looked around the, the whole restaurant, there was something wrong. The contractors had done a great job, too great a job. This was supposed to be an American roadside cafe. The whole place looked too new, too perfect. To fix this, my partner and I got some chains and we began, we began beating everything. The tables, the chairs, the walls. And I still remember our contractor watching with absolute horror <laughs> as we swung the chains and put a patina of age on his work. As I said, it's the details that make the difference. Then, about two weeks before we opened, we ran out of money. Our bank account was closed down. We had no way to pay our bills. We convinced all the various parties that we owed money to to work with us and give, up, give us some time to come up with financing. This became my first experience in creative financing. The financial stress initially put me in a state of shock. I remember my partner and I were up for 48 straight hours trying to figure out what to do. The Hard Rock opened on June 14, 1971, with no bank account, no checking account, and uh, we did about 300 pounds in sales the first day. So from the cash register, we paid the waitresses. The next day we did about 350 pounds, so we paid the beer man. The next day we did about 400 pounds and we paid the ice cream man and the kitchen staff. And it kept growing every day. To solve our money issues though, we knew we had to sell half the company in order to raise the capital we needed. But we put in a clause in the agreement with the people that were buying half the company that if we hit certain sales figures, we could buy our shares back. They thought, no chance these guys are going to hit those sort of numbers. Every day it got a lit little busier. And then suddenly, one day, there was a long line to get in. Eventually, the restaurant was all ours again. All of you will face similar moments of opportunity and challenge in bringing your own ideas to fruition. I don't care if you're opening a restaurant or building a website or closing an investment deal as an investment banker. 
It is your hard work and attention to detail that will make all the difference. Your customer, whatever shape they come in, will be cognizant of this and recognize this commitment. Good ideas are just the beginning. Anything can be a success. Anything can be a failure. The difference between the two is up to you. So the Hard Rock legend was continuing to grow. The line of people waiting to get in was getting longer. We were the toast of the town. We were invited to the Stones after party at their home. We were given the best table at Annabelle's nightclub. And because of all this, we had every invitation to self-destruct. I knew how easily we could have gone off the road. And I knew how hard it was to keep our hands on the wheel. Deep down, I knew that we had to remain grounded in terms of what our values would be in terms of this process. And with great work and perseverance, we did it and remained true to ourselves. Life has taught me there's only one way to maintain success, and that's through continued hard work and taking care of the people that work for you. This sounds simple. We all want to do the right thing, or at least most of us do. But it can be tricky. Success is a weird thing. It's very easy to have it go to your head and, frankly, make you act like a fool. After Hard Rock's fame continued to grow, we were living an extraordinary life. I was 23 years old. I was making more money than I ever thought was possible. And being young in an exciting city of London and the focus of a lot of attention was truly a lot of, it was a wild time. What I never lost sight of was what allowed us to be having such a good time. One of the most important reasons the hard rock was successful was due to the people working there. And I knew that if we took care of them, they would take care of us. That's why from the beginning, I always tried to make it part of the ethos of the hard rock, that it was a great place to work. Everyone, every single member of the staff was treated generously, fairly, and with great respect. We would do anything for the people that worked there, whether it was giving them interest-free loans or helping them with any family problem. I did this because I knew the employees were my ambassadors of goodwill. They were the point of contact with the customers. If they were happy, they worked hard, they were friendly and believed in good service, customers would pick up on that. We took the same respectful approach with our customers. We worked hard to deliver great food with great value. A satisfied and happy customer creates good word of mouth, and the word of mouth was spreading throughout England and beyond and soon to America. There is such a thing as karma, trust me. One of our mottos that became part of the hard rock ethos was love all, serve all, and it has become part of my business philosophy ever since. In 1993, I, I saw a similar opportunity in Las Vegas that I saw in London where a certain market was not being met. I was in the process of creating a partnership with Harris to open the first Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Harris was and still is the largest gaming company in the world. We, had, we shook hands on a deal that was 60-40. I would be the majority shareholder. And at the time, we were having a property recession in America. And the night before the deal was going to close, Harris changed the terms. They wanted 51%. They were betting with the property recession then that I would not walk away from a fully financed casino especially considered it was my first time out. I felt this last minute change changed the spirit of the deal we shook hands over and I walked away as hard as it was. It goes back to the same ethics I had from when I first started the Hard Rock. I won't go into business with someone that is not honest, even if that means 
walking away from a lot of money. A week later, I got a call from the president of First Interstate Bank of Nevada, which was financing the deal with Harris, and they said, we think we know a great part, another great partner for you. And there was a group based in Lake Tahoe, California, called Harvey's Hotel Casino, flew up to Tahoe, met with them, and walked away with a deal where I owned 60% of the project. Eventually, I was able to buy Harvey's out, their 40%. The Hard Rock Hotel and Casino turned out to be one of the best deals I've ever done. I'm not telling you this to boast, but because it's important to have a moral code you live by and are willing to stick to, even though the easier decision might be to break it. All of you are smart, you're talented, I have no doubt. Many of you will go on to great successes in your chosen field. Remember this, you are only as good as the people working for you or with you. Choose them carefully, treat them well. Do right by everyone. It's not always the easiest path to take, but trust me, it's the only road to true and lasting success. The last thing I want to leave you with is a story about learning to trust yourself. Let's go back to the 1970s in London. The first Hard Rock was doing amazing. The line was there. The papers were writing about us. Rock stars even wrote songs about the Hard Rock. And that's when the offers started pouring in. Many large restaurant companies wanted to join venture, franchise, expand the brand, open new ones all over the place, Europe and America. The conventional business wisdom would be to do just that. Maximize your opportunity for growth. Isn't that what they teach you at business school? We believed otherwise. We thought keeping it as a singular location with one line would make the Hard Rock special, an iconic destination. So we politely listened to the offers and said no to everyone. We always had been anti-establishment. That was our inner voice. And we tried very hard to stay true to it. We did not want to be just another faceless chain. We did not want to fall into the trap of just chasing the almighty dollar. We had a crazy idea that we could grow the business by not growing it. We didn't open another Hard Rock for 10 years, which allowed the legend of the Hard Rock to continue to grow as an individual entity, as opposed to just another restaurant chain. Keeping it at one location all those years made it a cultural icon. In the long run, it was the best business decision we could have made. We trusted ourselves and our vision, and that's what proved most valuable in the end. So let's fast forward to 2006. The Hard Rock Hotel and Casino is doing amazing. And I acquired 26 acres next door to the 18 acres the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino sat on. The condo marketplace in America was red hot. The entire project was pre-sold. We had approximately 2,500 reservations with deposits to buy our 1,200 units. It was all systems go. As part of the project, I got a loan for $1.2 billion from Credit Suisse. When I got that loan, it always puzzled me how easy it was to get a billion dollars. I remember how, how much harder it was to get that $150,000 loan in London. That's when the inner, my inner voice started whispering to me. It just didn't feel right. The condo market was booming. Projects were going up across the country in huge numbers, Miami, New York, Los Angeles, Las Vegas. I had experienced a real estate bubble firsthand in London in the early 70s and had seen how devastating the crash had been. Then I was traveling to Miami, picked up an issue of Ocean Drive magazine. It was about an inch and a half thick, and it was only filled with condo ads. 
And I asked myself, who is going to buy all these? And then that whisper inside me got a whole lot louder. My concern grew, and I finally reached a point where I called my lawyer and told them I had decided I've had a great ride, I feel incredibly f fortunate, but I wanted to sell everything. And I said, I want to give all the reservation holders, give them their deposits back with interest. My lawyer thought I was out of my mind. I didn't care. I trusted myself. We put the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino up for sale, the condo project up for sale, and all the land. And in three weeks, I had eight parties bidding on it. I sold the entire Hard Rock Hotel and Casino at the top of the market. The market crashed not soon thereafter in 08. Las Vegas has still not fully recovered to this day, and I'm still thanking my lucky stars that I got out when I did. What's the lesson here? Always remember we live in a boom and bust cycle. Gravity always takes hold and brings us back to Earth. I tell that to my children all the time. Whatever you do, be prepared for those leaner times. The good times will not always be here. Structure your business and your life so that you can withstand those inevitable changes. Secondly, each of you will find yourselves in similar situations to what I faced with expanding the hard rock and later the condos. The crowd will tell you one thing, everyone will rush to the easy money and push for you to join them. Don't fall prey to, to the conventional wisdom. Be true to who you are. No one knows what's best for you better than you. Listen to that inner voice, trust yourself. Now it's easy for me to tell you all these things. The truth is each of you will have to learn these things on your own, sometimes maybe even the hard way. Sometimes plans you make will be interrupted. You will get slapped in the face with rejection. Well-laid business plans will fall apart. And while these inevitable hard times may feel like the bitter end of something, it just may be the beginning of an even better plan. I still think what would have happened if my initial plan had worked and I had gotten into Harvard. I would have never gotten to live the incredible life that I've lived with Hard Rock. As you leave here today, my hope is that you pack my story away in the back of your brain somewhere and maybe it comes in handy as you live your lives. Most importantly, you have to be open to an opportunity when it comes your way because in life it may not come the way you think it's coming. And please remember, when your respective enterprise is a success, don't think that it's mission accomplished. Trust me, that's when the real work begins. That is when you have to stay the most grounded and remain true to your core values. And I'd like to thank everyone for listening to me, and I wish each and every one of you good luck as you set out to make your own mark in the world.